Molly Klaus arrives at the Capitol with a busload of lobbyists who have come to support a mental health bill. I kind of run through your story again. Now, you, were, you were not able to get the, the Right, there were two off. times that my um, benefits were cut off when I was in the hospital. Mm -hmm. And rather than having my doctor say I was ready to go home, my insurance company said I was, and I wound up back in the hospital. Mm -hmm. and what was that? I forget. Is it um, uh, bipolar? Bipolar. Representative Bob Damron proposes a bill that would require insurance companies to insure mental health treatment in the same way they insure physical health. Well, we're um, about halfway home. The mental health bill has passed the Democratic House and now goes to the Republican Senate. The Senate leaders send it to a committee for debate. And this is the day that committee will debate it. And these citizen lobbyists have arrived to demonstrate support for the bill. However, the meeting has been canceled. It's got two hurdles. It's still got to clear the Senate Health and Welfare Committee, and then it still has to clear the Senate floor. Grassroots efforts are what it takes to pass legislation. Down. Why I think they felt that I was good for this testimony was that if I had not been sent away from the hospital the second time, that I would have been able to be healthy again and able to continue working that fall. When the insurance company kicked me out the third time, uh, I was still in a really bad place. I don't think I'll ever forget the look on her face when she came to me at Baptist East and said, Molly, your insurance ran out and you can't be here anymore. I panicked. I totally broke down. I wasn't expecting it. Plus, I wasn't ready. So, get the word out. I'm just... I'm glad to be here. My career fell apart and my life fell apart and I just felt like I didn't have anything else to lose. So why not go to Frankfurt and tell my story and, and see if he could do some good. And uh, it was a pretty exciting time. After the rally, the advocates, always dressed in red, fan out through the Senate office building to lobby for the bill. I committed long ago to vote for the bill. If you get it where I can vote on it, I'll vote on it. No problem. Okay. Sure, thank you. Yes, sir. We appreciate you. Well, we're just spreading mental health everywhere. We could use some. Thank you. Senator Julie Rose was the head of the Appropriations Committee, and we couldn't get it out of that committee. She would not call it. Because there's a crunch at the end of the session, committee chairmen rarely call a bill unless it has a good chance of passing. With concerted effort, little by little, they pick up votes. And so Senator Rose does finally call it. Would you like to come forward, please? So I was forced to resign my job and go on disability retirement through Kentucky Teachers Retirement System. But you have to then choose, am I going to offer any mental health benefits or am I going to offer none at all? I mean, that's, that's the offering that we will have out there in the marketplace if this bill passes. From what you're telling me, we may, we may not be helping the most Kentuckians with legislation like this. Uh, an employer has the option not not uh, providing mental health coverage if they don't want to. Then, finally, after much debate and opposition... <laughs> Thank you very much. The motion passes. Thank you, sir. It was, it was sort of touch and go there for a little while. And it really means so much to those of us who have a mental illness that we are being heard. But their triumph is short-lived. Uh, one of the issues I'd like for you to explain to us, it has to deal with mental health. This bill has passed the House, and it's, it has even passed the committee here in the Senate. It's awaiting treatment on the Senate floor. The majority leadership refuses to put it on for a vote for the full body of the Senate. We have to be very careful when we're dealing with the issue of insurance because we are in a collapsing market because of... But the lobbyists haven't given up. But I would like to come and see you about House Bill 268. Can I do that? Yes. Okay, Thank great. You. Thank you. I appreciate it. The legislature now goes on a two-week recess. The mental health bill still hasn't been called. The outlook is bleak because the assembly comes back for only two days, then adjourns for nine months. 
and those last two days are usually consumed with conference committees and tidying up. However... So last Monday, I literally uh, gave myself a pep talk, screwed up my courage, and I called Senator Kelly at his law practice down in Springfield, and, and I said, Senator Kelly, I, time is running out, and uh, we need to talk to you about the status of the, of the parity bill. He agreed to see us for 10 minutes, and he listened to us for about 35 or 40 minutes. Though Kelly seemed impressed with their arguments, they've arrived this last and final day not knowing if their bill will be called. Well, and we've been they wait outside the Senate, hoping to see Kelly. Good morning, Senator Williams. Morning. Fine, thank you. Their greatest fear? Morning, that the insurance lobby has gotten to Kelly since their meeting. Good morning, Senator Borders. <laughs> Hi, Molly. Look, How he's got his red yeah, tie on. Uh, Matt's your will you uh, give me permission? to uh, read some of the parts of your correspondence with me today on the floor? Okay. Thank you. Thanks. Cannot thank you enough. Well, I can't thank you enough for getting me educated. <laughs> who, who was that? That's who? Senator oh, Kelly. That was, oh, okay. that was Kelly with his red tie that see it on the Molly <laughs> sent him. You aren't excited, are you? <laughs> I'm stunned. I mean, I, I just... Uh, Good to see you. just me one... One more vote, right? All we have to have is his vote. Assuming that everybody is here today. You see where his desk is? Second row right there. The last email message that I had received was from a young lady who has been an, an advocate for this bill, who has uh, late in her life suffered from mental illness. So I turned on the message and took a look at it and she had become cynical. She did not think that uh, we took action based on what was fair or right but what was safe and politically correct. Well my first inclination was to hit the delete key. It was late, I was tired, she wasn't in my district, she couldn't vote for me. <laughs> but the, um, th there was enough emotion expressed in the letter I thought that it, it uh, deserved a response. So we had the meeting, and at that meeting they were able to, to uh, explain things that I think are important to the members of the body. Armed with information the lobbyists gave him, Kelly makes several convincing arguments. If there's no further questions, I would move for final passage of House Bill 268. Matter before the body is the passage of House Bill 268. All in favor of 268 vote aye, all opposed vote no. Mr. Clerk, please call the roll. Senator Adams. Senator Bailey. Senator Herrick, Senator Jackson, Senator Johnson, Aye. Senator Karam, Aye. Senator Kelly, Aye. Senator Kerr, Aye. Senator Reaper, Aye. Senator Long. There are 33 ayes and zero nays. House Bill 268 is passed. You know, I didn't really have time to think about it until we got the action on the insurance bill and then your request to, to meet and discuss it was the first yeah. time I really had to, to focus on yeah. and think about it. And that's what strikes me so about this whole process that I've never known before is how overwhelmed y'all are. Yeah, if it hadn't been for your message, I would probably not have responded to your request. What did I say to you? Coming up here, I said, <laughs> Molly, you don't understand how crucial you've been. I said, Senator Kelly would have been very nice, but he would have been very firm and he would not have met with me. Right? Right. Yeah. <laughs>